Hi, all. Thank you, Lucia. Um, yeah, so I want to talk to you today about uh, the staff engineer career path, or in simple world, how you can become a leader without becoming a manager. Um, so I have a couple of disclaimers. First, I've got nothing wrong against the managers. I'm just thinking that uh, it's not necessarily for everyone to become a people manager. So I want to talk to you about um, the staff engineer career path so you can see if it could be something that you would like to look at. The second bit is, uh, I was a bit ambitious to fit this into 15 minutes. Uh, so if you have questions, you can reach out to me afterwards. And uh, let's uh, crack on. Yeah, I need this. All right, so my name is Jonathan. I'm a distinguished engineer at Sky. Sky is the uh, media broadcasting company, and we are part of the uh, Comcast family. Um, I'm currently part of the leadership team as an individual contributor. So an individual contributor is someone that uh, doesn't have any direct line report. It kind of manages technical vision and direction, but without managing um, people. One of the components I'm leading is the immersive experience in the living room. So Sky built a TV product and set a box, and that UI is built in um, C++ using Qt framework. Uh, and this is the Entertainment OS that's building these two great products, which are Sky Glass and Sky Streams, we are um, doing in the UK and also in Italy. Um, I'm an enthusiastic Qt developer since 2007. I've been in many uh, Qt Dave Days or Contributor Summit throughout the years, but it's such an honor to be on this side of the scene today. All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about my uh, own career path so you can see my journey and then see how it could apply uh, to you as well. So when I was studying software engineering in university, I always thought that throughout the years there would be new developers coming, new technology. I even didn't think about Gen AI at the time, but I thought that um, I would become probably a manager by the age of 35, 40, 45. But actually, um, throughout my career, I um, discovered the individual contributor career path, and that really changed my view of how could I grow my career. Um, early on in my career, since um, 2010, I was a freelance developer. And freelance is great for many things, right? You can uh, live abroad, you can work remotely. Pre-pandemic, there was not many options to work remotely within the company. But I was doing that, and I studied many uh, different industry sectors. I work in the film creation industry, like uh, you can see on the, uh, on the left, uh, cloud storage, security, and gaming. Um, I even um, wrote a um, Qt book uh, with other author in French uh, around Qt5 at the time where we were migrating from Qt4 to Qt5. And learning all this, I was actually quite great to get my uh, job at Sky in 2016 while well, we're still contractors working on the um, SkyQ project. As you can see here, our set of box that we released in 2016. Um, and then, so building on that, I uh, became permanent at Sky. I really liked the company, really liked the culture, um, and I became a principal engineer in 2019. And that's why I, I uh, chose that path to become an individual contributor, which I'm going to mention uh, in a bit. But that really brought um, or changed my vision of career progression um, as a software developer. So personally at Sky, I was actually quite lucky to work on the user interface. Because as you can see, it's really a crossroad uh, for, for a product to have a very broad vision of what happened uh, when you work, uh, for example, on a set of box. So working on the UI layer, I had to interact with every layer that was underneath, like middleware and drivers. But I also was the connection with all the cloud services, so where all the content is coming from, um, for uh, movies and all the editorial content. I also had to interact with other departments, like product requirement, which are mostly on the UI, and uh, with UI and UX department. So that kind of uh, broadened my, my vision of all the uh, company objective, the business, and also the networking between all these departments. So that was quite key. Um, 
I'm also always be very enthusiastic about CI/CD and continuous delivery. How do you uh, deliver software faster? How do you shift tests to the left, like we saw, uh, we've seen this morning? Um, and so, how you do like unit testing, test-driven development, etc. So, by bringing into this into uh, Sky and the project I've been working on, it kind of broadened my vision, and people got to know me. And, and throughout the different projects that you can see. Uh, on the right, I um, really start to, um, you know, present a lot of things to stakeholders, to executive, and, and then kind of grow my career throughout that. So we have some of the great product that Sky has been doing in the last um, seven, eight years. So we've got SkyQ in 2016. We integrated with Netflix to get content integration for our customers. Um, I was the first principal engineer working on SkyGlass a TV that we built ourselves and then released in, in the UK and Italy. And more recently, we had uh, SkyTrim and SkyLive, which is like a, a small camera you can put on your TV to watch content together or uh, do fitness or play video games uh, with SkyTV. So that's kind of my, my own um, career. But what I want to talk to you today mostly is the individual contributor, right? So. An individual contributor is someone that uh, is focused on different points that I'm going through, but doesn't manage people. Right? So it's usually someone that is highly skilled, has a very good technical experience on a specific area. It's someone that's going to work quite autonomously uh, in general, so they kind of create their own backlog of work by looking at what's going to be the future for, for the project they're working on. They will have then an influence throughout the work they're going to do without having the authority on the people they're working with. Um, they will shape project by um, doing like proof of concept or studying new technology. Um, and throughout this experiment, they will bring into the project these, these, these new things that they are looking at when they're success. Um, they're also usually the technical mentors for the growth of the team, right? So if you've got junior people or more junior developers, they will reach out to individual contributors like principal engineers, for example, to get some advice, to elevate their skills, and to look at their own um, career path. They usually, especially for small company, also the quality guardians of um, the code base and the tooling that they are using, uh, making sure that there is a quite a high standard in terms of, for example, code reviews, unit tests, code coverage, like we talked about today. They can be also brand ambassadors, um, like I am here today I'm talking to conference to represent the brand of your company. Um, and, and sharing the ideas uh, of your business. And the last one is uh, coming from an article from uh, Tanya Reilly, which I really recommend. The article is a blog post called Being Glue, and it's all the little work that the individual contributor will do, which is usually hidden. You don't necessarily see it, but they kind of put everything together, the people, the communication, the project, to make sure that the team uh, is a success. That's a very important part of, of the role. All right, so I tried to summarize um, the uh, con individual contributor pass. Um, I'm conscious that many companies have different job titles for the different points, but I tried to make something quite generic. Some companies use engineering one, two, three, four, five, and some use uh, job title. But if we look at an early career for a software developer, which some of you are, you come out of uni, you might have an intern or graduate job for uh, one, two, three years. Then you will become a mid-level engineer. And then after maybe five, eight, ten years, you will become a senior engineer. And after this time, that's probably where the crossroad is. You've got a choice, uh, a choice to make between becoming a manager, so you're going to manage people, manage projects, and it's usually through the name of engineering manager, seniors, and then you can follow the people leader path, uh, which we know in, in, um, in big companies. So you can become a director, vice president. And that's usually what, what we know. And in Europe, it's very common career path, uh, even for some people that don't want to do it. But that's often the only way to grow within a company. 
On the other side of the Atlantic, in, in the US and in Canada, you've got this individual contributor path, which is much more uh, well known. The first step might be staff engineer or principal engineer, depends, some company combine it, uh, and then you can continue throughout that career. So senior principal engineer, distinguished engineers, and fellow. But what's quite interesting is you see that actually align with um, the people leader path. So um, a senior principal engineer might be the equivalent of a director, and a, a fellow might be the equivalent of a vice president, which means they will have a lot of influence on the project or the department that they're leading. Um, Will Larson uh, wrote a book called Staff Engineer, and within this book, he actually interviewed a lot of individual contributors, and he defined the individual contributor as to four archetypes. Um, the first one is tech lead or dev lead. It's usually an individual contributor that works within a team, uh, within a small project, with another manager, and they're going to guide and make sure that this project is a success. The second one is uh, the solver, someone that is highly technical, is going to dive deep into um, a complex problem. In my world, it will be, we want to reduce memory, we want to make the hardware cheaper, how can we solve that? Um, that's going to be the solver. The architect uh, is an interesting one, because in big company, architecture is usually a separate department, and they have their own career paths. But in smaller company or startup, an individual contributor, we usually have the architect hat, uh, which basically is shaping the, the technical strategy, shaping the quality, and um, the crossover between the components. And the last one is the right hand. Someone that's going to work very closely with an executive within your company, and we kind of represent the technical vision throughout uh, meetings where, for example, the executive can attend and kind of drive this business objective uh, for them. So now you can think, OK, I'm, but I'm a senior principal engineer, I'm a senior, sorry, software engineer, and I'm already doing this. So does the title actually matter? And for me, and also for the rest of the individual contributor community, the answer is yes. Yes, because the title will actually give you um, some credibility, right? If you enter in a room, especially in large company, and you got like vice presidents and directors, the fact that you have the title, it will immediately give you some credibility. It also can only, it also can simply give you access to the room, right? Uh, in big company, when there's a bending and there's a lot of high-level meetings, it's rare that a senior software developer is invited. But, for example, for my, my case, as a distinguished engineer, I will be in this meeting and I will understand the uh, strategy that the business wants to go through. It usually comes with uh, a compensation boost as well, which is great, because, you know, when you get up in the bending, you've got some advantages that you get with that title. Um, and there's this role transition and this shift. And the shift is not only for the company, it's also for yourself, right? When you get a new job title, you're going to need to think, OK, but what does that mean? What I'm going to do every day? Am I going to probably code less? And then if I do code less, you know, what is my mission? So that's, that's going to kind of change your mentality and kind of see the, the longer uh, picture. All right, so now let's, let's assume that you um, are already a principal or in that career path. What are the success, the key strategy for success in that role? The first thing is, just remember that if you're in one of these roles, you're usually now part of the leadership team. So you're not here to control how the work is done or to micromanage the developers, but it's really you are now leaders and you need to act like one. Um, the learning curve is going to be much lower. Just be prepared that the feedback is going to be much lower. If you're looking at technical strategy for the next two years or five years, you need to be prepared that your strategy feedback is going to uh, come back to you and you're not necessarily going to know straight away if it was a good, good call. Um, make sure that you look at personal fulfillment as well. Um, it's important that you like your job, uh, that you like what you do, so talk with your manager and try to focus on things that actually inspire you um, in that role. Um, the next one, probably one of the key ones, is to prioritize your impact. 
If you're an individual contributor, make sure that you focus on what's important for yourself, for your career, but mostly for the business. Make sure that you understand the business goal and make sure that you focus on, on what's important for that. Um, once you focus and you understand what it is, articulate it properly. Make sure that you have a technical strategy, make sure that you publish it, make sure that it communicates through the rest of the team, and um, make sure that it's aligned with the objective. Share it with your stakeholders and make sure that that's correct. Um, mentorship um, is also going to change in a way that Obviously, you, you arrive to that position um, as a staff plus engineers. Now, the next step is for you to grow your team and make sure that the people within your team grow in the, in the careers that they want to do. It could be engineering manager, but it could be also a principal engineer. So make sure you support them, help them to grow in, that, um, in their career path. Because the success of your team is going to be your own success as well. And the last one, which is great for today, is diverse your network. Make sure that you talk to other people within your company, within different departments, but also into conferences like today. Learn from other business, learn what they do, what they succeed, where they fail, and then bring this back to your um, company. All right, so that was a, a short introduction to um, the staff engineer path. But if you are interested, you can come to me, but you should also continue this journey by two great books um, that I really recommend. So the first one, I talked about her already, Tana Reilly. She's a senior principal engineer at Squarespace, and she wrote The Staff Engineer Pass. And then Will Larson, um, a CTO from Carta, also wrote A Staff Engineer Leadership Beyond the Management Track. Uh, two very good books that I recommend. Also, if you don't know already, the Lead Dev community is a great community you should have a look at. So type leaddev.com. Go on the internet, and you can find a lot of incredible um, blog posts and videos. There's actually conferences, and the next one is in Berlin. I don't know if it's sold out yet, but if you're around, have a look. Um, I went to one in London in June, and it was literally one of the best conferences I've been to. Very, very inspiring by all these great individual contributors and the big tech companies. There's also a Slack channel you can join uh, for free, the lead developers, the slack.com. Right, so that's it for me for today. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out outside. You can scan the QR code and get my LinkedIn account straight away and connect and ask questions, or you can email me at jonathan.cotua at sky.uk. And if you like what you've seen, if you're interested about Sky, you can also look at carries.sky.com and see if you're interested to, to join the company. We have offices in London, in Denmark, uh, in Germany, and in Italy. And you, if you are a C++ Qt developer, you can actually reach out to me directly to see if you can join one of our projects. That's it for today. Thanks.